we are back. <laughs> we had a technical difficulty of mishap, but we are here. Welcome to another Chance Restoration Fellowship of Hope. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Say, this is the day the Lord has made. We're going to do what? Rejoice. And we're going to be glad in it. God has been good to us. And it's so good to be here for the first Sunday in the new year. What a mighty God we serve. Say, can't nobody do us like Jesus. Can't nobody. Do us like Jesus. Song say, He is my friend. I'm glad about it, aren't you? Oh, to God be the glory for all of the great things He has done. Hello, hello. Good to see each of you that are there. Can't see all the names this morning or faces too good, but I'm glad to know that you're there. We've been blessed with another opportunity, you know, to be able to praise God and to worship Him, to honor God, and to give Him all of our praises again. To God be the glory. Somebody just shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is so. Say, it is so. <laughs> it is so. Hallelujah. Without God, we couldn't do a thing. And this morning, I'm so excited. Hallelujah. Because he has brought us to this point in our lives. He's brought us from a long ways. And song says, can't nobody do me like Jesus. You know, that's that's one of my key songs. But this morning, I just want to um, we're going to just sing a song that says, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Oh, I'm blessed. Ah, to God be the glory. Times keyboards aren't always on. <laughs> I think I'm here. Somebody just give the Lord some praises this morning. Worship him, give him glory, give him honor. Why? Because it's the song says he has done great and marvelous things. And we are glad this morning that we can call on the name of the Lord. And he promised if we call him, he will answer. Ah, no matter what we're going through, we just call on the name of the Lord. He will work things out in our lives. There we are. <laughs> Had a few little things in there that I didn't need. Good morning, Brother Lawrence and Sister Jeanette. Good morning. I think I see Pastor Dottie Ray. Good morning. Good morning to those of you I can't see your names and faces. God bless you. It is great to be here. I see praising God this morning with you, Pastor. Thank God. Hallelujah. Because he is awesome. He is Lord. You know, and we're going to sing, but when I thought that song said, you know, I think we're going to do this one. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, what? Hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Oh, my God. Nobody can do us like Jesus. So when I think, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, come on, and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Saving me when I think of the goodness of Jesus, all He's done for me. Oh, my soul cries out, Hallelujah! I thank God for saving me. I thank God for saving. 
Thank God for saving me. Oh, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. When I think of the goodness of Jesus. Jesus. Good morning, Sister Dana. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. He's worthy.
glory to God. And you.
words for me. To your will and oh glory, oh glory to your way. I'll see yes, yes Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. Thank you for loving us. 
Bless our families, God. Look on the sick and the shut-in. Lord, work it out in our country. Oh, God, change things, Father, to better situation, Lord, where we come together, working together in unity, God. You, Lord, be in the head. God, we thank you. We declare victory in your name. Oh, in our personal lives, God, in the lives of our families, in the lives of the people, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God bless each of you this morning. See, Sister Geraldine, Betty Brunson, God bless you. Brother Speedy, God bless you. And others, I can't quite see your names, but it's good to see you here this morning. God bless you. May you be blessed by the service today. Mm. Going to read a scripture the Lord put on my heart and said to read this morning. Somebody just give God a praise today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I think I see Carmitha. Hello, Carmitha. Love you. So good to see you. It's a blessing to see each of you. Would you send a uh, each of would you send a share this morning to somebody and invite them on? Because God has a blessing through his word today going to read a scripture. If you have your Bibles, this is not the text today, but it's the scripture God shared with me to read. He said, read this to the people today. So I'm going to read it. We're coming from, from Psalms, the thirty. Mark my chapter here. Turn to Psalms the thirty second chapter. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. When I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. I acknowledge my sin to you, and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. For this cause, everyone who is godly shall pray to you in a time when you may be found. Surely in a flood of great waters, they shall not come near him. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with bit and bridle, else they will not come near you. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord, mercy shall surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then the 34th chapter of Psalms, of Psalm, I will, 34th division, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, 
and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamp all around those who fear him, and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and hung, suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears, and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as have a contrite spirit. Get this one. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but who the Lord delivers him out of them all. He guards all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. Wow. Two awesome scriptures. And God said, read. That's Psalm 32 and Psalm 34. I pray that you will read them again and let them bless you. Let them speak to your heart. As you remember the promises of God and you remember the word of the Lord. He's true to his word. He's true to his promise. Yeah, he keeps his promises. He cannot lie. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah to the King of Kings. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody just tell him, thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. We hallelujah. I'm excited about Jesus. Mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to do one more song and then let's do the word. Mm. We should sing the song, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never, never. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. You've done so much for me. for 
intercession for us. How can we forget? Woo! Glory to God. Can't forget. Somebody just said, I can't forget. Somebody just type, I, I can't see it good. I'll read it later. But just type, I can't forget. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you for this time as we come into the Word. God, prepare our hearts for your Word. Help us to hear your Word, receive your Word, do your Word, profit by your Word, be encouraged by your Word, and oh God, and live by your Word. We love you today. Speak to our hearts. Whatever you have for us to hear, it's, do it, Lord. Mm, teach us your Word. God, has anoint me afresh. Mm for this time. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We. 
It is well. It is well. Glory to God. It is well. Somebody say, it is well. It is well. It is well with my soul. Thank you, Jesus. It is well. Good to see each of you this morning. We're going to just go into the word. We've been, I've been, was doing a series. Uh, good morning, my sister Marie. Good morning, Jada. Good morning, I think I see Judy. To all of you, Sister Ju Judy, good to see you. And I think I mistakenly said uh, Pastor Ray was on this morning, Pastor Dottie, but I think it was her picture where she had sent me a message <laughs> that's still showing on my phone. So I let me correct that. So if she hears that, she'll say, I wasn't in the service because she's probably in her own service at this time. So let's look back at what God was teaching us last year. And he did not take me off of it this year. So he brought me back to it. But it has an interesting twist. And it was from Acts, the ninth chapter. I've been teaching about Saul and how he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. The story is in Acts the ninth chapter. And just to kind of start where I am today, at the fifth verse, I'm going to start there. And he said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom you're persecuting. It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. So he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what would you have me do? And the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no one. Then Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no one. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Here I am, Lord. So the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he is praying. And in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, so that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to hear my name before Gentiles, to bear my name before Gentiles, kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered his house, entered the house, and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales. And he received his sight at once, and he arose and was baptized. And when he had received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. Immediately he preached the Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. Mm. That's Acts the ninth chapter, and I stopped at verse 20. And you can read, continue reading it from the first verse. I've been teaching on this, and the Lord has is, is given me the series. I think I'm in part, uh, this is part seven of the series. The, I've been talking on the steps. Talked about how Paul, Saul, he's, he was later called Paul, so if I say Paul, this is still Saul how he connected with Jesus on the road to do something wrong. 
And so the steps that we talked about so far is step one where God told, Jesus told him to arise. Step two, he told him to go. In other words, move, take action. Step three, he told him where to go. Uh, step four, uh, Saul was obedient to what he heard the Lord say. So Jesus told him to go, and he went in spite of his limitations. He was blind now, and he wasn't able to go on his own. So as God had Moses, had a helper for Moses, there was helpers there for Saul. His workers or the soldiers or whomever were there to help him get to where God wanted him to go in his time of trouble. Step seven is where, uh, and so that step six was, it's good to have help. It's good to have somebody to help you when you're going through things. Step seven and step eight today is wait. Saul had to wait for his answer. He had to wait on the Lord Jesus. And I want to talk about the steps and then apply them to our lives. You know, to me, we talk about the history in the Bible. We can talk about the promises in the Bible, talk about the actions and the different things that happen. But we have stuff going on in our lives. And so we need to kind of sometimes apply certain principles or certain things that happen in other people's lives and see how can our lives be changed or how does uh, things affect us. So as I look and just in waiting, how sometimes we have a problem waiting on God. We have a problem waiting, being patient when we go places. You know, we go to the doctor's office. You might as well prepare to wait when you go to the doctor's office. But we sit there shifting in the seat. You know, you got an hour, two hour wait sometimes. <laughs> might as well take you a book and take you something to read, something to write. No need sitting there, keep looking at your watch because you've been there before and you know you have to wait. You know, we're sitting at that same red light every morning you go to work and it's a three minute red light or a whole minute. You're running behind, so you just impatient at the person in front of you. Move up, move up. Well, they can't go through the light. You know, it hasn't changed. You know, we get impatient about things that we really uh, can't make go any faster. Oh, uh, my Lord, you, you know, the mechanic's working on your car. And you say, when are you going to be through? Well, the man's got to go all the way down up under these uh, stuff in your car to get how he's going to do uh, a tune-up. He's got to pull stuff out before he can get to the the spark plugs or to the things he need to get to in order to do your tune-up. So you need to just sit back and let the man do his job and wait patiently. Mm, a lot of things in our lives is human beings, whether we're Christians or non-Christians, we have a problem waiting. Sometimes we hinder our answers uh, coming from God because we're impatient and we're unwilling to wait on the Lord for the answer. There are people in their marriages now, they're divorcing. Men and women are divorcing every day or walking out or feeling like walking out on their partner because they weren't willing to wait on the Lord to give them the person that was their, their mate. But now you're in it, so there's no need going trying to get out of it. Start praying and asking God to help you. Lord, if you can change me and change him or her, then change us and help us to stop being so selfish. Help us to begin to think of each other's needs and not so much thinking about me, 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 my, my, my. You know, I probably a whole lot of marriages divorced and a lot of relationships break up because of the me, me, my, my impatient syndrome. I'm going to call it the me, me, my syndrome. They are not willing to wait on each other and to meet the needs of each other. They're not willing to sit and listen to what the other person thinks, you know, before we jump in, you know. And sometimes, just as people, I know I'm guilty of jumping in the conversation sometimes too soon. Too soon. My daughter is great at keep pulling me down on that. I'm still working on it, Janae. 
And but sometimes we're in conversations and we're not really listening to the person. We are so impatient, we got things to do, we have our own agenda. So we go ahead of them and we are thinking before we get to hear what they are saying. Because we are not willing to wait. In marriages, as I was saying, people they walk out on each other because they may have even chose the right mate, but they didn't understand that marriage, you got to build it. You got to work on yourself. You got to work on your mate. You got to help them get through things and you got to get through things. You got to be tolerant of each other. You got to see the need and help each other with that need. You can't be so perfect in your way and you're not perfect and they're not perfect. As I said recently, if God gave you a perfect mate, you'd be out of place because you're not perfect. Uh -huh. So there Therefore, you got to be willing to wait for things to evolve. Whether you're sitting at the red light, wait patiently. Sing a song, say a prayer, but learn to wait. And waiting on God, we have a problem waiting on God. Uh, but God is already working things out for you. But if you're not willing to wait and you do like Abraham and Sarah and you go ahead of him, then you're going to find out that you are going to suffer with the issue that you decided to do ahead of God. It may be a problem all the rest of your life and for generations to come. Mm. In partners... Their head was hard. The butterflies were jumping. Their inner man kept tempting them and making everything look so good and right. So they got married. <laughs> they married him or her. And now they see clearly why they should have waited. Maybe they were too young, you know. But I'm in love. And they hadn't really lived yet. I want to say to any young people that are listening, take your time. Don't just jump in the marriage before you are. Give yourself some time. You know, I got married when I was 29. And I said, I'm going to do all the things I want to do. Travel, go places before I get married. Because if I get married and I can't do those things, you have children and you got responsibilities, then I won't feel bad. I won't go back and try to get my single life after I get married. Some of you are trying to get your single life, but you're married. You can't do that. You are married. You now have a husband or you have a wife. You have children. You got bills. You got a job. You got responsibility. So therefore, you've just got to be patient and ask God to give you strength to get through and to be effective in what you're doing. Don't go out trying to, you know, there's so many uh, women, they got their dresses up almost, they're older women, got their dresses all the way up where you can see if they bend over, you know, trying to be young again. Babies, we are who we are. Men trying to wear them tight pants and trying to do all these things. Look, dress modestly. Don't try to be who you are not. If you are 40, you are not 20. If you are 50, you are not 30. If you're 60, if you're 70, you can't be 20 again, can't be 30. I know my age, and I know I can't be 20, 30, 40, 50, or 60 again. Because... I am where I am. I want to try to look good. I don't have to look old, you know. But we need to be recognize who we are, what place we are, what point we are in our lives. Now, Saul recognized that he couldn't do a thing. He had to wait on the one that stopped him in the road. When you find that Things are not going like you want them to go. And you know God has given you a promise. Wait. Wait. I want to tie number 7 and 8 together. Because we're talking about waiting. And waiting for a new beginning. See Saul had to wait. But you know why Saul was waiting. He did something 
that sometimes we are complaining and trying to do stuff ourselves. He prayed. The man prayed. He prayed. Uh, uh, he had to pray to God or maybe he prayed to Jesus. But who, whomever he called, he prayed. And in his praying, he got to see a vision also telling him, you know, it was a prophetic vision for him saying a man named Ananias. He got the exact information. Ananias got the information about a man named Saul of Tarshish. Saul of Tarshish got information that a man named Ananias was coming. Do you know, if you wait on the Lord, he can give you explicit information. He can give you information down to the point. He can tell you exactly not to do that. Or he can tell you, do that and do that now. He can tell you where to go and or not to go. But you got to listen. If anybody know what I'm talking about, sin or like, or just sin something that you understand what I'm saying, God will talk to you. You know, this week or yesterday, I was looking for some stuff, and I said, Lord, where is it? I had been looking all over, and immediately my eyes fell on it. Then there were some other things I had on my schedule to do, and the Lord reminded me, you need to do that first. Whatever the other thing was, he said, you need to do that first. And so he gave me a schedule. And then I was off schedule because it, I took longer to do what I needed to do. And the Lord told me, do this. I was going to go and do something uh, to help my mom. And the Lord said, do this first. And I said, was thinking, but she's, he said, she's fine. You do this first. And he said, because if you stop, you're going to get off track. Mm, 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 mm. See, God can see the whole picture. And he said, she's fine. <laughs> and you know, I peeped in the room and she was fine reading the book. And I would have interrupted her. You know, so I went ahead. I said, Lord, you know, you know it all. So I went ahead and did what I was supposed to do and what he had led me to do. And let me tell you, he will speak to you. And then he began to just point some things out to me. And I want you to know that God will speak to you. The subject of this message has been, he speaks, he speaks. The series is he speaks. Lord, what will you have me do? And then he's given, like I call it, I don't know if a sidebar or a, a, a sub subject. And this one is wait on your new beginning. Wait on your new beginning. If you are willing to wait, he'll take you where you never dreamed you could go. Saul had no idea when he was trying to kill the Christians who were known as people of the way. He had no idea that he was going to meet the real Jesus. He had no idea. He didn't believe Jesus was really real. He didn't believe he really died and that he rose from the dead like these Christians are, were talking about. But Jesus showed himself to him. And he said, Saul's got to go through this. He's going to learn what the sufferings. He's going to learn what it takes, in other words, to live for me. He, but he's going to become my minister. He's going to teach the people. That'll be his new beginning. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Saul gave his testimony in Acts 26. And it's a good place to go read where he was talking to the king and telling him about how he saw Jesus, how he met him and how he told him, I'm going to use you. I, oh my God, let me tell you, it doesn't matter how bad you've been. It doesn't matter all that you have done. Maybe you have been uh, turned against the Lord Jesus. Maybe you don't believe he is real, but I want you to know he's alive and he's real. And all you need to do is begin to pray and ask him, show me, show me, show me, show me you. Help me to know what's true. Help me to know you better. Mm -hmm. See, new beginnings happen after waiting on the Lord. For Saul, new beginnings happen on after the vision 
was fulfilled after Ananias came. Oh my God. And I just want to kind of read some stuff that from this manuscript and, and share some things. New beginnings after being on the road to Damascus. After the vision came, it help came to him. He didn't know the people. Saul didn't know these people. He didn't know Ananias, nor could he see to help himself. But he had a promise in a vision with clear instructions, but he would have to wait for the fulfillment of the promise. Mm, mm, mm. Woo. It's a new year. You had to wait for the new year. And you have waited maybe for the promise and the fulfillment of your dreams or visions that you know have come from God. But you may be sitting and you are wondering, when is this thing going to happen? Nothing has happened. And you are waiting, feel like, in the dark. You feel weary. It's been so long. But the scripture says, what? Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Mm, 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 mm. Ah, because things are going to happen as he said. But you got to be patient. You got to wait. Saul had to sit and he had to just wait. You know, he couldn't do nothing. He was, he was in a predicament. He couldn't even see how to go. Sometimes you are blind until God opens your eyes to see the real truth. Mm, mm, mm. And Saul was blind. He thought he was doing right. He thought he was following the right one. But he had left Jesus out. And let me tell you, this, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. It doesn't matter how big that religion is. It doesn't matter matter how important your leader is, if you leave Jesus out as the Son of God, then babies, you can't see God the Father in peace. Mm. I was talking to somebody recently, and they were trying to tell me all of this and that, you know, and how Jesus was a prophet, and you know, and all of this, and how the, I said, well, the scripture says, that Jesus is the Son of God. And if you, it says, if for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In other words, God gave his Son. And if you don't believe on his Son, Jesus, you really don't believe in God. That's not Gwen saying that's the scripture. Oh my God. So Saul was after the people because he thought they were serving another God. But they were right to serve Jesus because when they served Jesus, they were serving God through Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Mm, Saul found out that he had to go through Jesus woo, to get to God. Mm, woo. See, Saul messed up in his life, but Jesus had a plan for his life. Oh, something to get him to another place. And you may have messed up. Your waiting, though, is just temporary. You may have had a promise from God. And I want to say again, your waiting is just temporary. Maybe you went ahead of God and made some decisions that that put you out of connection with God as you should, then just go and say, God, forgive me. I was impatient. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I felt the presence of God there. That was for somebody. I was impatient. I made decisions I shouldn't have made. I was not willing to wait on you because I wanted it then. Hallelujah. Ask him to forgive you and say, now, Lord, show me the way. Show me the way because I'm willing to wait on you. I'm willing to stand still and see your salvation. Oh, my God, my God, my God, and believe on you because you've got the word I need. You've got the promise. You've got the way. You are the way. Mm. And I want to follow you. Mm. You're waiting right now. It's just temporary. God's promise is eternal. And so is he. 
He is the overseer of what he promised. Therefore, his word cannot fail and it cannot return to him void or as an empty promise. He is faithful and just and he cannot lie. If God promised you something, he will fulfill it. You just got to keep your promise. Oh, glory to God. Somebody say it's the truth. Somebody send up a like or a star or something. If it's the truth, let me know you're here. Oh, Saul found that out. When he met Jesus on the Damascus road, Jesus told him what to do and where to go. Then in a vision, oh, he got struck information. Sometimes God will speak to you in visions. He'll speak to you in dreams. Sometimes he'll speak to you and have somebody else prophesy to you or have somebody else give you a word. Know God. Know the word. Don't listen to everything everybody say and go running off. Well, they told me I'm going to preach. And you go and get in somebody's pulpit or you go and start preaching. And God hadn't told you a thing. Wait on the Lord. Wait on your calling. Mm. Ah, as Paul, as Paul did. He waited to hear from, from, from God. And he waited for the promise to be fulfilled. I have a question. Are you willing to wait? Or are you waiting? How are you waiting? Saul waited praying. He waited and God showed him what was coming. Are you waiting for God to give you an answer? Are you waiting patiently to follow him and obey him? Or are you anxiously, God told me this was going to happen. I just don't understand what's taking them so long. I don't just, this. I don't know my purpose anymore. I thought my purpose was this. I, hey, if God said this is your purpose, it is your purpose. But he also said, wait. Let me tell you, you hear me say it from time to time, and I learned this from uh, Deacon Ulysses Rogers when I was growing up in Wilmington at Macedonia. And he said, preparation comes before the blessing. And I accepted that as a, a cliche from him or a word of wisdom that I use and pass it on the people. Preparation comes before the blessing. You can get out there before your you are ready and you fall on your face. God had to slow Saul down. He had to take him out of around those people he knew. He had to get him in a place he didn't know. Oh my God, so God could work on him. Mm -mm -mm. Oh Lord Jesus. Somebody say, work on me, Lord. Say, come on, say, work on me, Jesus. Work on me, Jesus. <laughs> work on me. Help me to wait patiently. Are you waiting or are you waiting anxiously for the fulfillment of a promise from God? Or are you believing him enough to wait patiently, even in a state of blindness, because nothing has sh shown up lately? Mm. Can you wait patiently and wait rejoicing instead of complaining? Can you wait patiently and wait praising instead of uh, being mad? Can you wait patiently and not worry God and not be worrying? Can you, oh, glory to God. Can you wait patiently on the promises of God to be fulfilled and not doubt? Oh, can you believe him with no fear, with no doubt, no alternative plan like Sarah and Abraham, as I mentioned it earlier, Sarah her God said she was going to have a baby, but she was old and time had gone by years and nothing was happening. So she had the nerve to send her husband in there to really commit adultery. Uh, but she okayed it going there with my maid, you know, and, uh, and connect with her and have a child. And I hadn't had one yet. So, you know, how many times we do foolish stuff, foolish things, and later find out that wasn't the way of God. Sarah and Abraham found out Ishmael was born at Hagar. And then Sarah is the cause of it. And she gets angry at the very <laughs> adulterous affair that she brought about. Mm -hmm. Because Ishmael became an enemy. That tribe now is still a problem for 
the Israelites. The Ishmaelites and the Israelites still are having problems. So had she just waited a little longer on God, on God's promise, it would have come to pass. I want to say to you today, wait on the Lord. Because your new beginning is coming. But you got to wait. There is a new beginning God has for you. He's given us a new year. Hallelujah. And he's taken us to new places in him. But babies, you got to wait and wait patiently. Don't wait begrudgingly. Wait with joy. Rejoice, the scripture said, the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Wait, praise him. Hallelujah. When you are tempted to, to complain, get a song in your spirit. When things aren't working like you thought they would work, be pray. Hallelujah. And get a praise time. When stuff isn't going good in your marriage around your house, you should have a connection with the Lord Jesus that's strong enough that you can pray for your husband. You can pray for your wife. Let me tell you, Power in prayer. The problem with relationships, I'm going back there again for some reason. The problem why people, uh, couples that are say couples are divorcing is because of their selfishness. Uh huh. It's going to make somebody mad. So the problem that our marriages aren't working is because of our selfishness. We, it's me, me, it's my, my, and we are not willing to go to God together. Catch your husband's hand, even if he's. A, an abuse, uh, abusing you verbally. Try to get him, baby, let's pray. He may say, I ain't praying, but you keep praying long enough and watch God do something in that heart of that man. Oh, I don't know why the abuse one came up because I'm not, I, I don't even like that somebody abusing you and you got to hang around. But sometimes you got to hang around because God's going to change that man. Ooh, glory to God. God's going to change that man and or that woman and he's going to make them into a Saul, into a Paul. Woo! But you believe the church prayed until the Lord Jesus intervened. I want to encourage you. Stop giving up so soon. Stop quitting. Stop complaining. If your marriage isn't working, pray. Ah, if your children are acting up, pray. It, get prayer meeting in your home. Hallelujah. Call them around the table and pray. Uh, my mom and my daddy, we prayed around the table. We prayed on our knees. They got us on our knees. Get your children on your knees. Oh, before my daddy was saved, my mama took us to his bedside and she had prayer anyway. We prayed. I can see myself right now kneeling and my daddy in the bed like he was asleep. But we kneeling at his bed, sleep. Because honey, baby, but one day word came that my daddy went the church, not to the church we were at, but he went to another church in Macedonia. Hallelujah. Word came up to the church we were at and said he was jumping benches. I don't know. That might probably was an exaggeration. But he had given his life to the Lord Jesus. And he was a changed man. And daddy no longer laid in the bed when prayer time came. We children no longer had to worry about praying in the, to, with him in the bed. But he got up and he was a, became a leader. Oh my God. Don't you give up on your husband. Don't you give up on your wife. God didn't give up on Saul even though Saul was persecuting his people. God knew that he could change him from the inside and do something worthwhile with his life. Oh, when the people pray, things happen. But when you complain, when you're fussing and arguing, and you are the one that knows the Lord Jesus, you've been knowing the Lord longer than your spouse Stop fussing. Stop arguing. Honey, baby, get your connection tighter with the Lord. And God will get you through it. I, I remember. I remember. I remember I had to pray so hard in my marriage in order just to stay. Ah, times I wanted to leave. And I had to pray. I had to pray. I wanted to walk out. But I had to pray. I had to pray to stay. And I'm glad I stayed. 
Hallelujah. I saw some things God did even in my husband's life. I saw things God did in my home. I saw things God did in the neighborhood where if I had left the neighborhood, some things wouldn't have changed. Some people wouldn't have changed. Oh, hallelujah. But I was able to walk through the neighborhood, pray with the people in the neighborhood. Oh, my God. They were Some were drunkards and alcoholics, prostitutes. Oh, living in adultery. But we got a job to do. Whew, hallelujah, hallelujah. I didn't know I was going this way, but I'm going the way God is sending me. Because this message, he wants you to hear. He wants to remind you, remind me. This first Sunday in the new year, we got a job to do. Whew, we didn't do enough last year. He has spared us to get to here. Good God Almighty, what are you going to do this year? Are you going to complain? Or are you going to move forward while God is preparing the way for you? He's preparing you. He's preparing you for something you can't see, as one song said, for the beauty, hallelujah, that lies ahead. Wait on him. Be of good courage as he did so. Mm, he will do new things in your home. Hallelujah. He'll save that old wayward child. That child that has talk back to you instead of just honoring you. You begin to pray to God for him. You begin to rebuke that spirit of rebellion. You begin to rebuke that, that disobedient spirit. You begin to rebuke that lying spirit in your husband, in your wife, in your children, even on your job. You got people there before they can tell the truth, they'll lie on you. Honey, babies, pray for them. Woo, Jesus, there's power in prayer and then wait on the Lord to bring a change. But don't wait fussing about it. Don't wait begrudgingly. Wait and praise God. Say, God, I know that you're going to do something about this. I give them to you. I lift them up to you. Turn them around. Oh, God, work in them. See, we forget the power of prayer. People, we forget who we serve, I think, sometimes. My God, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We get pains in our bodies, and I do too. And the first thing sometimes we think, is that is that is that fatal? Um, is that COVID? Is that am I gonna die? We get pains in our bodies. And instead of praying first and telling that pain, get on out of here. Oh, we get the moan and we begin to rub in it. We begin to, you know, just patting it. But honeys, we got to use the power within us more. And I'm talking to me and you. Oh, hallelujah. You know, sometimes I'm saying, Lord, move this. Sometimes I'm saying, Lord, do this. And he said, you got the power. And I'm saying, Lord, work this out. He said, it's in you. The power's in you. You rebuke it. I say, Lord, rebuke this thing. And the Lord said me, he said, you rebuke it. You rebuke it. I say, okay, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you, Satan. Get on out of here. In the name of Jesus, Satan, you go. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm -mm -mm. Is this making any sense to anybody? We are the power lies within us. Sometimes you just hadn't gotten to that place yet. Oh, but God is taking you there. Use the gifts that are that you already have. Oh my God, the promise will come, but you gotta wait on the Lord. You gotta wait patiently, and while you're waiting, you gotta pray. You gotta sing songs of joy. You gotta sing praise songs. Stop thinking about your circumstances and getting depressed. Stop it! 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 Saints of God. Saints of God, Christians, you are saints of God. Stop thinking about what's not working and begin to think about what has worked when you prayed diligently before. See, some of us, we went through stuff before in our lives and we prayed and God changed. God brought a change. And then the old enemy said, oh, they got through that. Mm. I need to send them another curve. I need to let them think that it didn't work. And he'll send you another curve. He might work through the very one that was doing good. And you look, what happened? You know, our marriage was doing good. What happened? I was getting raises on my job. And now they have stopped blessing, giving me raises. What happened? You know, the children were doing good. Now they're acting like the devil. What happened? Mm. 
Monies were flowing. Now it looks like my, my, my well has dried up. The devil, all he wants is to discourage you. He wants to discourage you. But honey, wait on the Lord through praying and fasting and rejoicing because your new beginning is in the line up. It's in the line up. Okay, Lord. All right. It's in the line up. Yeah. You know, there are some other people in the line too. They may get theirs before you, but you are in the line up. Woo! Glory to God. Somebody type that. I love it when the Lord give me new thoughts. It's in the lineup. You're in the lineup. And if you are lined up for the blessings, like I saw a whole people voting and I went to vote and I looked, I said, Lord, that line. People were in the lineup. They didn't mind staying in the line because they knew if they stayed in line, they'd get to that voting machine. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And you got to stay in the line with Jesus. Jesus. If you stay in line, you'll get what he's got for you. Stay focused on Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. And you'll get the blessings of the Father. Mm. He will come. And if you wait on the Lord, he will come and give you a new beginning. It doesn't matter how bad you are or how you've been. Jesus will forgive you of your sins. Oh, why? Because he loves you. He cares for you. Mm. Therefore, if you're willing to wait on him, he'll open new doors for you. He'll turn things around. Hallelujah. He'll make you a blessing to people. Hallelujah. You'll look around and people will begin to bless you. You'll get showers. That song says showers of blessings. Showers of blessings. He'll bless you spiritually abundantly, physically abundantly, financially abundantly. Oh, hallelujah. Mentally abundantly. You'll find yourself having wisdom that you never dreamed you could have. Oh, glory to God. You'll begin to speak and God will open your mouths and words will come out that you didn't even know were there. Hallelujah. He'll, he'll have people. People putting money, hallelujah, in your mailbox. He have people sending you what you need. If you need a car, he have people giving you cars, hallelujah, hallelujah. But I know this has happened to people, and some has even happened to me. Hallelujah. Let me encourage you as I begin to close this out. Mm, wait on the Lord. Wait patiently for your new beginning. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. You are at the beginning of the year and you are on a new track. A new track. All things are passed away. Whatever happened in 2020, don't go back and try to grab any of that bad stuff. All the unpleasant stuff that happened. Ask God to heal your wounded spirit. Ask God to heal your heart. And you tell the devil, look devil, I was blessed to cross over, and I am going to thrive with God. I'm going to thrive with God. Okay, that's a new one for you. I'm going to thrive with God. Hallelujah, somebody type it. I'm going to thrive with God. Say it. I'm going to thrive with God. Woo, hallelujah. Let the devil know. I don't belong to you. I'm not yours. I'm not your vessel. I belong to Jesus. Mm. Psalms 40 says, I waited patiently on the Lord and he inclined his ear to me. In the NIV it says, he turned to me and heard me. He brought me up out of a horrible pit. He lifted me up out of a slimy pit, the NIV says, out of mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. Verse 3 says, he put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in him. Ooh, that's Psalms 40. See, when you obey God, God will do something to you and through you. And so Paul has been gone many years. But we are reading the 13 epistles that he wrote. 
had he not waited on the Lord and just sat there. If he could have told those men, take me back, take me back to Jerusalem, take me back, uh, take me back to the chief priest. Let me tell him what happened that I didn't get it done, but uh, I, I'm going to go to a doctor because I'm blind. Huh. He could have, but I, uh, he knew that man didn't strike him blind. Hallelujah. He knew that he had all, he met the King of Kings, Jesus. And there was a reason for his life being spared. And Jesus told him, you're going to minister for me. Ah, be encouraged, people. Know that God has a plan for your life. Don't give up. Don't quit. Just wait on the Lord. Wait patiently on the Lord because he's doing new things in your life and if you wait ha he'll take you to places you never dreamed he'll get you before people you never imagined could happen some of you have gifts and talents and you're wondering why the door hasn't opened for you and look like it's opening for other people. Just keep preparing yourself. Oh, glory to God. Just keep getting better. Just keep sharing what you have. Share that part you have and God will do new things in your life. Oh, love the Lord with all your heart. Hallelujah. 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 And when you wait on the Lord, you can sing like we used to sing. We have come this for my faith leaning on the Lord trusting trusting in his holy word see you gotta trust him why because he's never with me all oh. this far. He brought you this far. 
your faith has gotten you this far. Hallelujah. Don't let nothing make you doubt now. Don't let anybody make you doubt. Let me tell you, we're going to have some stuff happen in 2021. We had stuff we never dreamed happen in 2020. But you made it, didn't you? You made it. You didn't think you could, but you did. You came by faith. Hallelujah. And even when your faith got slow, got low, Jesus showed you, I'm here. I got you. I got your back. Hallelujah. Don't give the devil any credit. Don't give the devil anything to lean on. Because see, he knows our weakness. But when you begin to feel pain, just pray. When you begin to have sickness and disease and things going wrong, honeys, pray. And don't lose your faith. Don't lose your faith in God. Because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Oh, oh, glory to God. I read the scripture this morning. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, not man, not the doctor, uh uh-uh, uh, uh uh, the Lord delivers them out of all. Believe it. Use your scriptures. Use the scriptures. Say the scriptures. Say the scriptures. Don't be fearful. Yeah. We've lost loved ones and we may lose more. And it hurts so bad to lose them. But don't you get a fearful, fearful, and don't you get afraid. Hallelujah. And don't you get angry with God. Hallelujah. Let's just witness to as many as we can. Let's lead as many to the Lord Jesus. So if they go, they are ready to meet the King. Let us witness. Talk about him on the internet more. Hallelujah. Stay out of gossip. And lead others to Jesus. Because that's all the what the Lord wants, I believe, us to do right now. Is concentrate on winning souls. He knows what's coming. He knows. Hallelujah. Regardless of who's in the White House, we're going to still have stuff that we they can't do a thing about. So therefore, let's lead up. We got to lean on Jesus. Let's lean on Jesus. Lean on Jesus. Hallelujah. Because he is the answer to everything. Now the songs I sang, so we have to make sure we give credit that, you know, I didn't write those songs. And I'm about to sing one as we get ready to close. As I said, Jesus is the answer. Andre Crouch, I believe, wrote. accept the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior. I want to tell you, Jesus is the way. He's the answer. You've been searching everywhere to get relief. Uh, Your mind is just bogged down with issues. But Jesus is the answer. He can give you peace even in the midst of the storm. Turn your life over to Jesus. Uh, Give him your problems. Turn it over to Jesus. Let him work it out. 
Hallelujah. Ask the Lord Jesus to come into your life and forgive you of your sins. Believe that he is the Son of God. I used to wonder, well, why did God say, uh, you know, that we have to believe Jesus is the Son of God? We believe. But more and more as I hear people doubting that Jesus is the Son of God and that he was just a prophet and that he was just a good man, the more I hear that, I understand why the way to Jesus, the way to God, is through the cross. Ah, and believing that he died on the cross. The Son of God died for your sins and that he rose from the dead. Ah, hallelujah. And all you have to do is accept what he did for you at Calvary. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God, as we go, we pray for those that don't know you today. We pray for every backslider. We pray for those that are just weak in their faith. And God, we pray that you would strengthen them. Oh, Jesus, you said, I pray, hallelujah, that your faith fail you not. God, you knew we were going to go through things. Hallelujah. You said you pray not only for those that were with you, but for those to come. And that included us. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for us. Have your way in our lives. Forgive us of all our sins and help us to walk in your word. Help us to love you better. Help us to be holy as you are holy. In your, the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, in Jesus' precious name, we say amen. Hallelujah. This is Pastor Gwendolyn Malsby of Another Chance Restoration Fellowship of Hope. Please come back next week. Share this video. Hallelujah. Somebody needs this word. Share it. Pass it on. And come back next week. You can go on our website, windowscreations.com, and get some books uh, that can be a blessing to you. You can go to the podcast. Please listen to the podcast, the first podcast of the new year, the second episode uh, that I did on last night. Um, finally put it on early this morning but listen to it i believe it will bless you and go to our when you go to uh, youtube please uh, subscribe and when you go to any of these websites please subscribe and follow me because that helps it also helps people know some people some go and they listen and they look but they don't subscribe i'm asking you please subscribe or just hit follow on wherever you go because that helps the numbers and it also encourages me to know that people are following me and they are hearing the word and they are sharing it with people also um Go to the church's website, anotherchancerestorationfellowship.com. God bless you. Hallelujah. You're free. Let's go there. Free. Now, this song is mine, so I don't have to make any things about it is my copyrighted song. So, free, free, no longer ever bound. Sing it with me. Free. Got no chains holding me Free, yeah Free, no longer am I bound Free, free Got no chains holding me He loosed those chains That had me bound He took away my fears And he turned me all around He gave me peace within And he changed my life of sin Now I am happy and I again and that's why I'm free hey buddy I, I, I. oh yeah are you free come on send it up send some likes and some love that you're free Free, free, got no chains holding me.
eyes of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, rule, rest, and abide with you now, henceforth, and ever. May you be blessed today, now, tomorrow, every day of this year. May blessings come to you. May you prosper and be in good health even as your soul does prosper. May your family prosper. May your marriage prosper. May you prosper on your job. May you help people prosper because you are a child of the King. God bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, you're free. Now go help somebody else get free. Whee! I love you, and Jesus love you. Tell somebody, I love you, and Jesus love you. I love the Lord, I love the Lord, and I love you. God bless you. You are somebody special. Happy New Year.